Hello, everybody. This is Chris, and I am chucking dice. And it's been a while, but I've been building my table, and it's taken me a long time. I tore my other table down, and I didn't have my new table ready to go yet, and things have just been busy. And anyway, I uh, am finally back, and I appreciate you, uh, well, hanging around, waiting for me to make some more videos. Hope you enjoy this one today. This is going to be a, a talk about what happened when I built my table and how it might help you. If you're considering building a bigger table or a more, a more regular size table, I went from a six foot little practice table really to this 10 foot table. And I appreciate uh, same bet uh, helping me immensely. I used his table as a model and got a lot of input from him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few pictures that I took along the way and then uh, I'll be back and uh, I'll show you uh, I'll show you a little play on my table here as I wrap up the uh, the video for today. So with that said, let's let's get started. I'm going to walk you through some of uh, the pictures that I took along the way. And uh, let's take a look. Appreciate you being here, and I hope this video is helpful to you in some way, or at least mildly entertaining. So here we go. Okay, so this first video was a video I took at the lumber yard. I am not handy with construction stuff at all. So I just went to my local lumber yard and ordered the pieces. I had measured it all out. I knew how big my 10 foot table needed to be. I knew what the pieces needed to be shaped like and all that stuff. And I just went to them and said, Hey, can you carve it for me? And they said, yep, they can. So I uh, bought the wood and went out to their shop and basically had a sheet of paper that showed them all the cuts I wanted to make. And they made them for me. So the next photo is uh, of me. Now I used, you can see at the bottom of the photo here, you can see um, I just used sawhorses uh, to, to make the base. So there's two by fours. And then on top of the two by fours is a layer of two, two layers of three quarter inch plywood. And um, again, if you watch uh, a video that was done probably a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I don't know, by uh, same bet, you can see his table. It's very similar. Uh, his He probably did his better than I did, but uh, all I've got is uh, 10 foot long and four foot wide um, sections of plywood. I used a cheaper plywood on the bottom layer because that didn't matter as much. And I used a better quality uh, top layer and I had it cut to two and a half foot wide. If you're, depending on your location, for me, I had to go upstairs to my attic and it was easier for me to, uh, it was easier for me to use smaller pieces, although that took more work to get them pieced together. I had to glue them together and um, I think you'll see that in the next, in the next picture. Um, anyway, I think after I got it all laid out, I just threw this felt, threw my layout down on top of it. I wanted to see what it would look like. This is not the final process. I just threw it up there to see what it would look like. And, uh, okay. So then I had to actually get it ready to, uh, to mount to the table or to, to the two by fours. So you can see here, the, um, uh, I've got the pieces prepped and glued together and some of the pieces didn't hold together with glue, like I hoped. So I ended up using screws to, uh, to anchor them to each other, but I did all that work. And these pieces were here getting ready to, uh, finish curating so that I could, uh, could start putting everything back together. And here is a picture of me, um, or this is the me screwing all the pieces down, mounting it to the uh, two by fours. And after everything's all done, you can see it looks a little more smooth, although there are some rough spots that I didn't get quite like I would hope. But uh, this, I sanded it down and removed all the fragments from when I screwed everything together. So I just tried to smooth the surface a little bit and that's the boards right before I started putting everything together on top of it. Uh, unfortunately, I did not take pictures of the underlayment uh, on top of, I used uh, a layer of vinyl and then I used a layer of flannel and then the layout on top of that. So this is the layout sitting on top of the, uh, of all those pieces now. And now I've started building the sides. This is the side panels put together and sitting there ready for the end pieces to go on. And here you'll see 
another shot of uh, the end the end rails. Uh, everything squared up now, and that was just a big box with the layout on the bottom. And I think I have one more picture here. Yeah, so then I put my bumper. I only have one alligator bumper. And so because this new table is so wide, I, um, I only was able to put one piece down there. I don't have any other pieces, so I'm going to have to buy, probably I need to buy three more alligator bumpers to put two on each end. But uh, that is basically the photo walkthrough. And now I'm going to pick back up with my video where I, uh, I'll show you the finished table and I'll play a little bit. Okay, now that we've got the pictures out of the way, uh, let's get back to the video. This is my table again, a uh, 10 foot table. I only have one bumper uh, because my little six foot table didn't need more than one bumper and I just practiced on one end. So uh, I do need to buy some more bumpers, but uh, this is the way it is. And I don't have the extra bumpers on hand yet. And, you know, sometime I hope to finish out the uh, the side rails and, you know, at least stain them. And I'd probably at some point finish it out a little more maybe with a top on it for the rail and uh i don't know we'll see but uh, for now it's playable and i do need to get a shop back i don't have a i don't have a handheld vacuum and so i've got some dust on the table and you probably can see that in the videos but especially on this black felt but i uh i will um we'll deal with that later so anyway i hope you uh Hope you've enjoyed this video so far. Let's shoot some dice, all right? I'm going to play a strategy I hope to play tonight at my local casino. And it's going to be a don't pass for, well, I'd, I'd like to do $50. I'm just not that aggressive. So I'm going to do 25 on the don't pass. And I'm hoping to establish uh, a outside, extreme outside. I'd love the four or the 10, and I'd play 44 inside. But uh, if the five or the nine is a point, I probably would, uh, would be okay with that. But um, I'm still kind of thinking this through. So anyway, uh, let's see what happens here. I am going to use a three, two, three, six dice set. And I'll just see what happens for a few rolls. Dice are out. All right. Well, that's not. Not what I'm looking for. Come out seven. Helpful if you're playing the pass. Not helpful if you're playing the don't pass. Okay, dice are out again. Looking to establish a point. Three, two, five. All right, five is going to be the point. I'm not used to playing on this bigger table. It's interesting how just the perspective and uh, the size of everything is just so much bigger. <laughs> uh, everything's harder to reach. Everything takes a little bit. You know, it's further away. So okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid the five and I'm gonna do two units on the six, eight, and nine. I'm gonna need to get some change. Oops, one, two, three, four, five, five. Yep, five. So get some change for the whites. Cap the six and the eight. And now I'm going to try to avoid the five, and I'm going to try to go for uh, two hits on the six, eight, or nine and press those up. I'll show you how that works. Looking to avoid the five for a little while here. Dice are out. Six, four, ten. Can you see that on the video? Yep. Okay. I'm not sure. Again, uh, all new, uh, all new camera angles and setup means that I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to have to relearn everything. So bear with me here over my next several videos as I try to dial things in. Six. All right. That's a hard six. Since I shoot with a 3-3 three, three on top, that's uh, actually actually good. So, Okay, so a 6 is going to pay 14. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up one unit each. 
and I need one more nickel. Oops. I don't know how this shows up on the video from clear down at the other end. So again, I'm gonna have to dial this in a little bit, but I've got one camera here showing just the end where I'm shooting uh, two and the other camera down here showing the whole table. And we will have to just kind of play that by ear and see how how that goes. I will experiment with that a little bit. Dice are out. Ah, four, three, seven. It's a stinker. Four, three, seven. Going to be a loser out here. All the placements come down. And, you know what, I'll just put that here. And I'm going to win a green chip here. Just bank that. And we will reset and start again. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're enjoying the warmer weather. Hopefully you're staying away from COVID as it still seems to be uh, making its way through everybody. Five, one, six, six is gonna be the point. Okay, so I'm gonna avoid that six, put two units on the Five, eight, and nine. I do need to cap that eight with two whites. Now I've got the five, eight, and nine trying to avoid the six. I don't like the six being my point. Um, so what I'm going to do, well, I don't really like, I can't really hedge this out. I'm going to have to just play it. If, if I'm the shooter, they make me at my casino. Um, they do make me play it. I, I don't know if I can regress this or move this down to table minimum or if I have to just play it out that way. But uh, for now, I'm just going to gonna shoot like this. So I'm going to avoid the six. Would love to hit the five, eight, or nine. I'm trying to make a couple hits before I uh, figure out what to do next, but that hasn't happened yet. So here we go. Four, one, five. All right. Good deal. It's going to pay... 14. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press up the eight with one of those, press the five, press the nine. I need to throw in one more nickel to press the eight up. Now I've got three units on the five, eight, and nine. Looking for more hits on those numbers. Dice are out. It's going to be a 6-5 yo. 6-5 yo isn't going to help or hurt. Uh, I do have a question for you if you're uh, watching this video. How's the lighting? Um, everything look bright for you? Are you seeing everything okay? Can you see the numbers? Can you see the dice? Everything, everything looking all right? Appreciate your feedback. Dice are out. 628. Good deal. 628. That's going to win 21. So I have three units on there. That's a $21 winner. So what I'm going to do, press up the six or the five, eight, and nine, one more, pocket that nickel, and I'm going to go up to four units each. Now, each win at this point is going to win. Uh, it's going to win 28. So I'm going to hopefully exchange $30 for two. And this is a strategy I first heard from Ben Sarmenti, I think, called the 30 for two strategy. Kind of stuck with me. I like playing it. And dice are out. Hard 10. 
Oops, I didn't press that. <laughs> didn't put the nine up there. Hard 10 doesn't have anything on it, so that's not going to help me or hurt me. Oops, I keep bringing that back and hitting my chip. Okay, dice are out. All right, five, three, eight. Okay, five, three, eight. Again, I've got 30 as a winner, and I need to give them two. So it was going to win 28, so I'm exchanging the 30 for the two, and we call that the 30 for two strategy. So what I'll do at this point is I forgot to move that one up too. So I got four units on each, five, six, and eight. And I am going to just keep shooting now. I'm looking for one more hit, and then I will figure out what to do at this point. So at that point, still trying to avoid the six, hit the five, eight, or nine. Dice are out. Not going to happen. We've got a four, three, seven. That's the way this strategy usually goes for me. I uh, end up pressing up once or twice, and then big red comes and I don't end up getting to collect much winnings. I am going to win 25, which is why I like playing the don't. As long as you can avoid hitting the point, uh, the don't becomes a winner on the bad number. So I'm going to just call that good for now. And so I started with $300 and I know I didn't, didn't do great, but uh, I did win a little bit. So there's four, 100, 200, 250, 275, 285. So I'm down 15 bucks, right? Down 15 bucks. That's not bad. And uh, I like playing the don't because of that. It helps me hedge. If I was more confident, maybe I had a little bigger bankroll, I'd probably do $50 here. $50 on the don't pass would cover 44 inside for a 0.7 out. And uh, anyway, that's probably the way I'd play if I had a little more money. So in my bankroll. Anyway, I appreciate you watching this video. And again, I will uh, be excited to start producing more videos uh, in the near future. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.